Hey, welcome back. Oh, look at that. I used it. Welcome back. Hey, remember I got the uh, did the unboxing of these guys here? Um, and I said I was going to do just a little bit of touch up on them. So I figured I'll do a video. I'm, I'm going to do the little bit of touch up on this and show you how I do it. Uh, we're going to be looking at primarily this area here on the toe and then the toe binding on each pad. I have two cameras set up. I have one right here above me on this little gooseneck thing that honestly, I don't know what the heck it's actually pointing at because I can't see the screen on it. The screen's on the top. So we're going to hope that we get some video from that. We have a few things to start with. Number one, we have to uh, remove the toe laces and then we're going to remove the toe bindings themselves so we can clean up this area a little bit. I guess we'll get started here real quick. Uh, I do want to point out one thing. Uh, maybe you'll see it right here. I put a cord from my bench over to my power outlet on the workbench. Nothing better than putting something ankles height right in your way where you're going to be walking back and forth. Unfortunately, I don't have it in me to uh, save those guys. Those knots look nice and tight and old. Um, yeah, I'm not going to bother. Sorry for the top of my hat there on the camera. Cool. Couple little tools I tend to use on occasion in this project are uh, a thread ripper, a razor knife, exacto blade, you know. And then uh, just, this is actually like a star wrench for um, like working on cell phones, changing the glass displays and stuff. I will sometimes use that just to grab a thread to pull out. So first thing I want to do is look at how they did the stitch on this one. And it's a really uh, basic thread pattern, nothing fancy. Use the thread ripper first and see if we can get under this edge. Have to really be careful I don't pull that Cordura there. Probably just grab one more thread on this and then try grabbing from underneath and pull some of those loose. Since I'm replacing this binding, I don't really care if I screw up the binding a little bit. It's already pretty toasty. Uh, Cooper would leave an open face on the front, an open edge of the material up at the top like that. It looks like Vaughn sewed it and then rolled it over and sewed it again so you'd get a finished edge up on the top. I'm going to label that one because I'm going to keep it just as a template in case I need it, but that's uh, outside. And then we just got to clean this thread up which we can grab usually from the bottom here and pull a lot of that out and pull it back from the top. Keeping in mind this thread here is actually sewing the layers of felt and uh, cordura together at the toe. So we really just want to be careful we don't open up the pad. So on this one I think that's as far as I want to go with thread removal because it overlaps on the bottom down here. And I, I want to be careful that I'm not pulling any of the actual thread out. I've got all the long ends trimmed off. There's no sense going further with that there. I have to do that three more times between the two pads. So we're just going to cut right here. Um, and I'll come back uh, when I've got all four of them removed. All right. Well, that took a little bit of time. Now we need some other supplies. Be needing these in just a little bit. Check this out too. While I was uh, remodeling, pretty much everything got a label. All the drawers got labels. The sewing bins got labels. Like uh, the SK2000 box got uh, parts box got labeled. Like everything got labels. So we'll grab a new blade. Really, I don't know how much I'm going to be using of this. Um, not sure how much repair or smoothing out I'm going to be able to do on these but we're going to start right off the bat hopefully the camera's pointing this way there's a little flap there 
So I'm just going to try to get under it and just surgically remove that little flap. I'm not sure if that blade's going to be sharp enough, but we're going to see if we can just gently shave a little off of here. We're just trying to smooth it out a tiny bit. Get rid of some of that fuzz growing off of it there. Don't want to do too much. And I say, if you're doing this based on my videos, do this with caution. For me, it's always something I'm confident, I have enough self-confidence that I can either fix or, uh, or do work with any issues I might make. Give me one second, I gotta find another tool. It's probably over here. Oh, it's right there on top of the bin. This is a handy dandy sweater uh, fuzz eater. So hopefully that's showing up. I've smoothed that quite a bit compared to like here or where it started from. Now we're gonna move on to this because this looks like uh, it could just use the shaving. All right, so again, hopefully it's showing up quite a bit smoother on that pad as compared to here. Quite a bit. Try to get some light in there for you. Quite a bit smoother than this one. You can see how chunked up that one is. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clean this one up a little bit. And then again, we'll come right back. Okay, well, I'm back after an unnecessarily long delay because this old phone I use as a camera above here, battery died and I had to rig up. Of course, none of my cords are long enough to go from the outlets over there, so I have an extension cord draped. Yeah, it's just more stuff for me to hit my head on or trip over. Okay, hopefully these are both showing well here. Nice and smooth, as smooth as I can get them. Again, I'm not going for factory finish here. I'm going for looks good on the ice. I don't know, for these pads, once a year, maybe twice a year. We're just gonna start with it the way it is here. And we're gonna grab one pad to start with. Items that I'll be using. Latex glove, old shop rag type thing. I used to have a red rag that has like a whole mess of different color splotches like dyed into it. I don't know where I put that. So we're gonna use this guy. It's an old towel, hand towel or something piece. And some black acrylic craft paint. Uh, sometimes I use gloss, sometimes I don't use gloss because honestly it doesn't ever seem to make a difference. Step one, shake it up. All right, step two. Step three, just grab the rag and you wanna kinda of put it over one finger. We are not gonna be wiping on the paint. We're gonna be dabbing the paint, pressing the paint in. So we're just gonna start with a blob. And let's start up here on this part right here. We're just going to press it in. Just pressing. No rubbing. If you rub that on there this way, you will uh, work up that underlaying synthetic layer. Just a dot at a time. Try not to get it all thick too much in one spot. So I always like to kind of, while it's fresh on the rag, just kind of dab across the whole area I'm going to be working on and then just press it into it. By pressing it and pulling back, you're kind of allowing it to get absorbed into the material. Uh, you're just using pressure and kind of a sponge effect so that it soaks it in. So if you've seen any of my other videos about this process, <laughs> when I've done big projects, really bad. So I did the coho pads with the acrylic paint. 
and it's a popular video and it gets referenced all the time and quite honestly very few people i've ever seen follow that process to a t and are patient with it um, that video is an exceptionally long video of mine and that's that's because i was trying to show that it is a long process you want to take your time you don't want to get pads on a monday and then do that process so you can wear them on a friday it's just not going to work out uh, i have since only done one or two larger restorations using that process and i now try to stay away from gear that needs that much work i only did it originally as an example and as a test after doing a bunch of research on could it be done so there's where we're at so far now we're going to move to the side of the boot here so yeah i don't i don't usually do a whole lot of that kind of restoration anymore i just don't have the time for it i have the patience i'm just busy with life and that takes a lot out of you to have to spend the right amount of time on a process like that and listen this is not the end of this process either but it's a lot more hands-off it's a little I've, I've tested this process i've used this quite a bit on quite a few different sets of pads that just need the touch up here and there it doesn't always work perfect it does a good job and it's an easy way you can go back if if you ended up with some wear areas again after using the pads you can go back and touch them up again be careful up here by your like cordura especially if it's a different color um, i'm pretty lucky with this one that they're black but if you've got any other color there you've got to be very very careful at your border maybe put a little piece of tape over it something that won't damage now, hopefully you're seeing this that maybe even give you a side view of how i'm doing it instead of from the top let's see you know i'm gonna mess this up or get a make a mess on my workbench i'm pressing i'm pressing my finger into the material pushing it down in so that as that material comes back it's it's kind of acting like a sponge and soaking that paint in that's why you're not seeing any pooling of the paint okay don't nitpick it don't think about it too much get it good like that slide it aside grab your other one do the same step okay again i say don't nitpick it nitpicking that right there because there's a little glob of something usually with this kind of paint it dries really fast on material I usually give it about a half an hour and then I go back and I do a second coat on them so I'm gonna wait about a half an hour but for you guys it's gonna seem like right now all right so we've accomplished that now here's the little bit of the patience game oh and by the way I'm not messing with this side out here it's not bad enough and it'll look funny if I try to touch those spots up because there's not a whole lot uh, going on there this is about the waiting game now a lot of people want to rush their way through this um, I recommend you don't so now you want to let this wait I'd give it till tomorrow give it a 24 hour period or you know 18 hour period or something for that to dry and then we're gonna move on to sealing that step and you want to do all this before you bother putting your new toe binding on in a project like this if there's anything you're replacing you don't want to get tied up into replacing those parts first you could you know touch them with the paint or whatever and, and end up with a problem so i'm gonna end this for now when part two comes out i'll have a link down below for it so you can finish watching the repair of this set of pads if you have any comments or questions about the process so far drop them down below in the comment section don't forget to follow my new instagram account and as always 
Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two.